So, hi, um, as I said, uh, my name is Davo Smith. Uh, I'm a, a senior developer at Synergy Learning, Moodle partner in the UK. Uh, I've been working with Moodle for the code for about 15, 16 years, and I've been there at uh, Synergy Learning for about the last 11. Um, so, obviously, I don't know from across the people in the room uh, exactly how much you know about automated testing already. I'm guessing one or two of you are here, you've heard of automated testing, uh, but really know nothing at all about what it is. Uh, there might be a few people here who are absolute world-class experts in automated testing, and you've only come along just to try and catch me out in the Q&A session. Uh, or possibly uh, you're actually here for the next talk, and you're just hoping I keep it short and sweet and uh, get out of the way. Uh, but to start off, what is automated testing? Is that working? Great. Okay. I like to think of it as a bit like having your own little personal robot that's going to uh, lo set up a Moodle site based on the code uh, that you've got on your site and is then going to tap away at it and try various things out and make sure that they all do exactly what they are supposed to be doing. Um, so, ooh, let's see. So, why is it important? Why does it matter? Um, I'm going to talk about four different places where, it, or four different times where it's really important to have automated testing in place. The first one is during the initial development. Now, I'm a developer. Um, I write a lot of Moodle code. Uh, and during the development, I try to make sure that I put automated tests in place right at the start. Uh, because it's really, really good for making sure that as you're writing the code, you don't break things that you've already written. Uh, it's also uh, really good for making sure that you don't forget things. So the number of times where I've written a set of automated tests, and then I've sat down and I've written some code, and I've gone, oh, I've finished the code, great. Oh, I'd better just run the automated tests. And they all run through, and then it says, oh, wait a minute, you haven't done this bit yet. And I go, oh, whoops. Uh, and it's a lot better to do the oh, whoops there rather than waiting until QA get to it, or even worse, the customer gets to it. Um, it's also really, really helpful when you're adding new features. You're going back to old code. Um, you've asked the developer to do some extra features on it, and you really, really don't want the developer to be breaking the bits that are already working whilst they're adding new features. So if they've got a good suite of automated tests, then that should make sure that those features don't break uh, when it comes to adding something new to it. And on a very similar um, sort of uh, front is when you come to doing a Moodle upgrade. If I assume you've all noticed that every six months, a new version of Moodle comes out. Now, I'm not saying that everyone upgrades the new version every six months. It might be take every once a year, every other version. But still, at some point, you need to know that all those plugins you have installed on your site are going to work with the new version of Moodle. And that's where automated testing is absolutely invaluable, because it makes sure that uh, very easily that the code will still work. And finally, the last one, if you've got third-party plugins from all sorts of different places uh, and you're installing them all onto one site, you want to be able to make sure that they're not going to interact in bad ways and cause problems. So uh, running automated tests is a very good way of making sure that all the code across the site is nice and solid. So I'm sure what you're thinking at the moment is that automated testing sounds absolutely amazing, uh, but it's got to have some limitations, and it does. First thing is, it can only test what you actually think of to test. So if the developer doesn't think to test something, then the automated testing doesn't do it. Also, it can't spot obvious problems. So it will tell you that that text there, the test worked, was present. It will not tell you that the color scheme is hideous. And it will not tell you that the text is overlapping and the wrong way around. But it will tell you that the words, this test worked, were present on the page. So it, it's not perfect, but it's a very good starting point. So there are two types of automated testing in Moodle core. Uh, the first one is unit testing. That's really the very detailed developer-orientated stuff, the details of the internals of the code. And that's written using PHP unit. And the second one is uh, what's called user acceptance testing in Behat. And that's more about testing through the browser, making sure that things appear on the page, and when you click on this and type this, it works. 
So I'm going to very briefly look at uh, unit uh, PHP unit first. Before I go on to that, there's uh, things that the automated tests all have in common. They all set up a scenario, then they do something with that scenario, and then they check that the results of that scenario are exactly what you expected them to be. So I'm going to give a very quick example from PHP Unit. Now this is, I've chosen for this talk to look at the mod forum because it's actually quite an easy to understand plugin. Uh, and so it's got quite a lot of unit tests in uh, automated tests in core. So if you look inside the forum activity and any well-written plugin, you will find a test subfolder. And inside that, you'll find a number of files. And in this case, I've picked out one called subscriptionstest.php. Um, and it has this function in it, test subscription modes. So this is testing the different subscription modes to make sure they actually do what you expect them to do. So the first thing I said, you need to set up a test. So here we have a little bit of code that's creating a course. You can see that, create course, pretty obvious. Uh, and then we've got something which creates an activity module. And then we're gonna log in as a user. So that set user is logging in as if you're a user. And then we do something. In this case, the something we do is set the subscription mode to force subscribe, which means that everyone has to be subscribed to that forum. Okay, and then after that, we just do some quick tests to see, well, if I forced everyone to be subscribed, well, is the subscription mode force subscribe now? Hopefully it is, yes. Um, is this particular user subscribed? The answer should be yes. Uh, is this subscribable? Can they choose whether or not to subscribe? Hopefully not. Uh, and so on and so forth. So we're just testing some of the internal interface. For non-developers, that's not so exciting. The hat tests, I think, are a lot more interesting for non-developers. Um, and those are always found similarly in forum, in tests. But if you go into a subfolder called the hat, you'll find a whole load of things ending dot feature. And uh, in this case, I've opened up the one called my forum posts dot feature. So again, we set up a scenario. So in this case, we've created some users and the following users exist. Okay. And then it says, and the following courses exist. So it's created a course called course one. It's very imaginative naming in some of these. Um, occasionally get bored and start mentioning Batman characters and stuff, but, uh, but most of the time it's just course one, course two, student one, student two. And then we're enrolled in the course, the following course enrollments exist. And then we're creating an activity, a forum activity, strangely enough, because we're in the forum uh, module. And then we log in as a student. And this is actually, we'll go to the browser and log in to that page as that student. Okay, we make sure the following activities exist. Uh, and then uh, we go through. And then we, uh, we post some messages to forum. And then we go to the user profile page and follow the forum post. So this is the do something section. And finally, we make sure that on that page, uh, the text, how awesome is this forum discussion, actually appears on the page. And also the words, actually, I've seen better, should appear on the page. So what does it look like? Now, if I'm really lucky, this will work. So let's see if I can actually play this. Is that going to play? Here we go. There we go. It's just going to run this exact test that I've just shown you. And there we go, posting on the forum and submitting it, going to the uh, posting a reply, going to the profile page, and there we go, it's done it. That was a bit fast. So here it is again at half speed. <laughs> uh, so again, hopefully we can actually see it uh, this time. Okay, welcome, uh, and there we go. We're going to a uh, forum, we're posting a message. You see it very quickly types it in, uh, posting a reply or adding a discussion. Then we're gonna post a reply, I think. And we can see it typing in under the browser as it goes. Uh, and then it's going to the student profile page. And then we can see the posts made by the student. And we can see the discussion side of the student. Still quite fast, but you can see there it is actually running and going through. So hopefully, uh, you'll be a little bit less scared to go and have a look in that tests folder. But ultimately, why, as a non-developer, should you care about automated testing? Well, first of all, I'd ask you, do you care that the code on your site works? Hopefully, the answer is yes. Um, you should care about automated testing because Core Moodle uses automated testing like PHP Unit and Behat to make sure that the Core Moodle code works as expected. 
You should care because if you're going to download a third-party plugin from the Moodle plugins directory or from GitHub, you must make sure that it has a good set of automated tests because that's how you know it's good quality code and is going to be maintained and can be tested against future versions. And you should care because if you're going to spend uh, 10,000 euros, 30,000 euros on someone developing a custom bit of code for you and they deliver it without a full set of automated tests and hopefully now you know where to look to find out if they have given you automated tests, then they've only done half the job. If it's not there, then you have no way of being able to check it automatically when you next upgrade to a new version of Moodle. So, there we go. Any questions? From there. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I'd like to ask you if the Behart testing can check for uh, overlapping features like uh, buttons are not accessible for a default user? Uh, it can test for a certain extent. So it can tell um, that if, if there's a button on the page, uh, but there's something on top of it, a pop-up on top of it, so you can't access it, then it can do that. But what it can't do, it's not very good at, I say, intelligently say, all oh, that text is overlapping. So you still need some uh, a QA team to actually go and do those sorts of checks. But it's very good for testing the sort of obscure sort of th uh, features are not working. I uh, don't have a question. I was going to say thank you, Dad. It was a great presentation. Particularly, I liked the, the fourth point on your slide and why for merging in um, custom features and things. Because when people are merging, you know, collaborative communities we see here, what we see a lot is if you have very complex merge requests with different plugins or merging features in, having those tests is a real help. That's something that we really see and is a good way to evaluate good quality code. So, yeah. Fantastic. Hi. Um, as a non-developer, so after the, the BI testing has run its course and it fails, yep. how do we know where it failed? Is there some kind of logging? or uh, When you run the tests, it will uh, list out um, sort of all the, pl all the tests that failed and which, line, which particular step they failed on. And potentially, if there were any debugging or error messages generated, it will tell you what the, exactly what they were. Uh, and that means you can then go back in and start investigating. Obviously, from this perspective, for non-developers, I'm not really expecting people to be running these tests. What I'm really encouraging you to do is just make sure that they're there and actually go and read them. I hope you understand from the Bahat that they're, they're pretty readable. It's pretty clear what they're doing and it can give you a really good idea what the plugin does uh, in there. But yeah, um, developers, you would get enough information to then go and investigate further. So it would just show up in the debugging info, or uh, when you run when you run the tests yeah. on the command line, it will show you at the end. Um, it will say this test failed on this particular this feature failed on this particular step, and this was the error message, or it didn't find that text on the page, etc. But yeah, um, yes, you can. Yes, that was yeah, a good point there. It also generates um, if you've got the setting on, it will generate a screenshot of the page and the full HTML of the page in the state it was in will be dropped into a, into a folder. 